Hi, my name's Ailey. Um, I'm part of the Life Itself team. I do research, communications um, and media. Um, and I'm here today with Liam Cavanaugh and we're going to talk about the upcoming residency. So Liam, if you want to start by maybe telling us a bit about yourself, maybe a very brief introduction to the residency. Yeah, so uh, my name is Liam Cavanaugh. I'm co-founder of Life Itself uh, and lead researcher. The residency uh, really draws on both of my, my background, so uh, my, my two main interests are really contemplative practice and I guess non-dual inquiry and then science. Um, so those, those are, I did a PhD in cognitive science at the University of California, San Diego, uh, which is a center for research into embodied cognition. Um, so it's a, a sort of uh, post manus computer uh, view of the mind uh, and during my whole life I've been really influenced by uh, yeah, non-dual traditions of various kinds. Jiddu Krishnamurti was an Indian philosopher was kind of my first uh, love after reading Siddhartha in high school you know but, uh, not going particularly into Buddhism and then I found Thich Nhat Hanh after a while uh, and have been really influenced by him. Um, Obviously, our whole organization is uh, it's a long story uh, that we don't need to go into, but, <laughs> but Plum Village is part of it. That's why our Bergerac hub is in Bergerac, which is 20 minutes away from Plum Village. Um, and yeah, so the, the residency is really um, kind of a continuation of, of a, an effort on my part. Um, and a lot of other people. So for me personally, it's a chance to uh, deepen the connection between science and, and uh, non-dual traditions. And so um, Phoebe DeKell and, and Jamie Bristow, who are gonna be my co-conveners for that, have um, similar interests, but coming to a different way. Phoebe was uh, formerly a biologist. She calls herself a renegade scientist who has uh, basically created really uh, successful popularization of Joanna Macy's work. Uh, Jamie Bristow is kind of a world uh, communications leader in the mindfulness movement, uh, making mindfulness more accessible to people and um, arguing for its importance uh, in public venues. Uh, so he was formerly the, the head of the all parliament group, uh, secretary of the all parliament group. So the parliamentarians in the UK who meditate together and is currently the head of the mindfulness initiative. Uh, and, you know, basically uh, ex explains the value of mindfulness for um, better lives and also ecological transition or transition to an ecologically sustainable or ecologically respectful society to um, UN leaders and government leaders and the general public. Mm. Uh, yeah, and all of us are very interested in how can science and contemplative insight, the, 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 the insights of long-standing wisdom traditions be more synergistic. And so this residency is kind of part of that. Great. Okay, so why do you think we need to have this discussion? Why do you think that we need this residency like now within the context of our wider society? Yeah, so, I mean, we're here at the, the, the last residency, Eco-Spirituality, yeah. the current one. Mm -hmm. It's going on right now uh, where we're dealing with issues of um, ecological precarity, <laughs> collapse. Some people might say kind of the initial stages of, of collapse. I mean, we see thing, ecosystems that are collapsing worldwide. Um, a lot of people recognize that we're in something like a crisis, a crisis of crises or, mm. or over a mess, you know, the mess we're in is, is, is another thing that yeah. I, I, I like for it, a bit more uh, straightforward. Um, uh, yeah, and so, and there's a, a widespread understanding a lot of levels that something like, and this is also the subject of my book, and so uh, Jamie and Phoebe to have their own answers, uh, but I can probably give mine, uh, mm -hmm. and which is that um, the way to appreciate uh, interconnection, so interbeing, which is sort of the main subject of this residency, mm -hmm. 
it's kind of the reality of life, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not the reality we live in. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that the innate human capacity for holistic thinking uh, can connect us with, if you want to put it in scientific terms, mm -hmm. uh, you know, holistic cognition. Uh, but that is not something which is kind of on the menu in our schools or have mm. in, in our society, respected in our society for some time. It's quite, it's the, the, the thing that holds together um, many wisdom traditions is an appreciation of mystery, right? If you go, so when you have interfaith dialogues and then also if you connected that to the, what people who are spiritual but not religious feel is kind of the valuable part of their spiritual lives. So across all those groups, uh, mystery is really quite important. And if you're in a space of mystery, you see the interconnection of everything um, mm -hmm. quite powerfully, uh, we might say. But that's not something that um, we teach, uh, that we, we, it's not something we practice together as a mm -hmm. society. And so the subject of this residency is really about um, what types of practices can we make or perfect uh, that are acceptable in you know, secular society mm -hmm. based on science and contemplative inquiry mm -hmm. uh, that can put us in touch with this morally profound insight of, of interbeing, okay. uh, which is kind of... Really, it's, it, I mean, it's Thich Nhat Hanh, Thich Nhat Hanh is known for um, popularizing the word, but the insight is the same thing actually as what Buddhists are really talking about with okay. emptiness, and which is present in, in really most of the world's wisdom traditions. Mm. Okay, and like, why, why do we need this? Like, why do we need this approach to thinking or to science? Well, the benefits are really appreciation of how our own lives uh, depend on everybody else. Okay. I mean, so it's a, if you fundamentally are looking at the world with the insight of interbeing, mm -hmm. uh, then the idea that my life and your life, my happiness and your happiness mm -hmm. are inseparable is kind of obvious. Mm -hmm. It's clearly not obvious to our culture, right? Yeah, sure. It's like deeply connected as well in Ubuntu. Right, the the African concept, um, which is of, it's a bit more of a community focused insight into being, but that basically communities, there's no there's no way of separating members of a community or members mm -hmm. of, of a society. Um, is another example where um, there is a reflexive um, tendency to care about other people if you mm -hmm. have uh, an insight into interbeing. Mm -hmm. um, Things just like, you know, from scientifically, you can look at it through the mirror system, right? We're, we're intersubjective beings that we're constantly understanding each other by uh, essentially my model of you is, is me and, mm. and you are a model of myself mm -hmm. and we can't really separate. I'm learning about others by looking into myself and learning about myself by looking into others. And um, that doesn't mean that we have perfect insight into other people's experience. Uh, that's not uh, what we mean here. Uh, what it means is, is that our experiences are kind of inseparable, mm -hmm. right? Just to take one example, mm -hmm. but you can look at that at an ecological level. You could look at it at the level of say quantum physics. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can use um, and so, to illustrate that and maybe I should can talk about how this might be different from some other uh, gestures towards that reality that people might hear yeah. okay, so we, we talk we hear a lot about say quantum physics and maybe mm -hmm. how it shows that we're interconnected okay right um, and that's true but quantum physics has been around for about a hundred years now okay and we, we talk about the double slit experiment um, is um, showing that, wow, it's, it's amazing that it's just our, our knowledge of sort of of a particle uh, will affect the way it behaves. Mm. Uh, and isn't that incredible, this, this, this um, perspective of entanglement? But at the same time, um, 
gravity showed that we're interconnected. You know, centuries ago, right? There's this mm -hmm. spooky action at a distance, right? That basically things across the universe are pulling on us from, you know, light years away, mm -hmm. you know, thousands, millions in cases, mm -hmm. light years away. Um, yet that doesn't translate into a lived experience of interbeing, mm -hmm. right? So that there's the, the insight into interbeing, what we're calling the, the insight into being is not an intellectual insight. It's a, a, what we call direct knowledge or direct experience, this kind of more felt experience, the kind of felt experience that actually affects behavior in a way similar to another, another distinction is knowing that we could die at any minute and really knowing that we could die at any minute, like living each second like it could be our last, mm -hmm. right? Like everybody agrees intellectually that, of course, I could die at mm -hmm. any minute. You mm -hmm. know, it happens all the time. We all have an example of somebody who yeah. had an aneurysm and dropped dead. Mm -hmm. um, and that could happen to me right now. Uh, but am I living like that? Mm -hmm. Right? And those are two totally different things. And that's the type of shift that we're talking about. The, the a work of contemplative practice is really to um, perfect and, and engage in practices that are accessible, that brings us closer to the living each second like it's our last kind of insight rather than the just knowing that in principle it is possible theoretically that I could die mm -hmm. in two seconds. Okay. Okay. So how does the residency tie into this? Like what are what are you going to be up to at the residency? Yeah, so the residency is basically, I mean, a bunch of people who have um practiced um, interbeing, um, the in, practiced uh, deepening their insight of interbeing in various contexts. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a number of students of Rob Berbea, who uh, is a quite famous teacher in the UK who died recently, um, um, who will be attending, um, you know, like very senior students of, of his, uh, actually. Like, uh, and they'll be coming with their practices. There's of course people from Plum Village. Mm -hmm. um, so in Rob's world, they would call it emptiness. So that's the more traditional uh, Buddhist view. Mm -hmm. uh, and Plum Village, they call it interbeing, but that uh, doesn't, <laughs> that's not really the important thing. The important thing is seeing it. Okay. And people have a scientific background. So there's, there'll be a, you know, a number of people coming from scientific backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, you know, the idea is really just to, to work on the kinds of practices that could potentially make it into a general mindfulness course, right? So, okay. so right now there's Kabat-Zinn courses which sort of teach mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, a generation ago when they started that work, it's, it's no fault of that community. Like you couldn't fit something like interbeing into it. Um, nowadays, both the scientific advances uh, on various angles and the general consensus of the scientific community and the entry of mindfulness into the public sphere as a sort of legitimate and useful activity open the door for practices which use mindfulness and maturing scientific understanding as a doorway into gaining direct insight into interbeing, mm -hmm. which the spiritual traditions, wisdom traditions hold is transformative mm. morally. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of the new possibility that our kind of contemplative activist ancestors like John Kabat Zinn and Thich Nhat Hanh and mm. people like that have opened up for us. And so, this isn't kind of a, a you know, trying to correct their faults, it's building on sure. their work. You know. mm. Great, fascinating. So is there any sort of end outcome or expectation that you have from the residency? Yeah, I mean, what we'd like to do is come away with the beginnings of, of practices that we could then start to um, re actually design a module mm -hmm. uh, that could be added to existing courses. Great. So, you know, we get so the beginnings of this is, we could, add, we could be, these are some practices that we could then um, 
go and, and give to mindfulness teachers and, mm -hmm. and they can uh, start to experiment with them themselves mm -hmm. uh, and of course you know people who are coming are well placed in that to do that kind of thing mm -hmm. so we'll be looking to start that type of that process this mm -hmm. is a really crucial um, point in that process and there's a it's part of a wider dialogue what we'd really like to do is um, and what we will do is is to uh, work on a, a wider course which is uh, basically uh, seeking to transmit uh, the crucial insights of, of wisdom traditions using uh, scientifically uh, acceptable facts and mm -hmm. mindfulness with no appeal to a particular wisdom tradition because um, you know as, as Thich Nhat Hanh has said uh, Buddhists are too attached to Buddhism um, all of the people and, and all of the you know it's gen and it's not a criticism that's unique to, to Buddhism uh, mm -hmm. various wisdom traditions get attached to their name and their particular practices but there is a, an open door to insight through science and what we just call philosophical mindful philosophical inquiry mm -hmm. right this kind of we have in in western culture the respect for inquiry uh and we have sufficient scientific facts and if we uh put those two together in a really serious way we feel that you should be able to get all of the 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 wisdom that is embodied in the the wisdom traditions sort of into the secular space mm -hmm. um you know th that which most of it which is with worth transmitting i suppose uh to put it that way that there's a, a lot of how to say it, there's a there's a personal dimension to um spiritual practice which always requires uh more of a person-to-person -person relationship um more of a particular attention to particular lives and so we realize that that is still um part of spiritual tradition so we don't mean to be saying that this we are uh going to transmit the truth through this program mm -hmm. but the kinds of universal uh truths which are things like impermanence uh the fact that there's interbeing mm -hmm. um and the fact that although we see ourselves as separate from other people and really we are, we kind of aren't right mm. this kind of illusion of the ego things like that uh can be transmitted uh through a, you know a pretty public program so that's really what we're looking to get started and that will leave people particular lives um lots of there's lots of work for people to um look into their particular lives their particular traumas their particular um you know their particular form of suffering mm -hmm. but um we can we can we can uh, make the, the big insights available mm -hmm. so this is an ongoing thing of course we're getting we're getting started on may 6th so uh be great to have people joining us uh and but that's also part of an ongoing thing this won't be mm -hmm. the, the last week very likely we'll do something which is associated in August there's another ongoing uh, conversation about the kind of science that could be done to uh, help science speak more clearly about the issues I've just been okay. raising mm -hmm. which is a bit of a separate question um, but on both of those uh, pursuits I you know of course invite contact and emails and um, expressions of interest and uh, definitely a visit to Bergerac. Yeah, great. Do you want to talk a wee bit about the sort of extended Sympoesis series? Yeah, so Sympoesis um, means ma basically um, creating together. Um, and um, it's a series of residencies which really, I'd say, ask it's about asking dangerous questions or uh, I, I'd like to say questions that are too spiritual for political spaces and too political for spiritual spaces, mm. right? So there's this kind of 
well, there's this thing that we came up with called secularity, um, which was a great innovation, but um, which we see something of the limits of it coming up in Western culture because this what we're what you're what one is getting at or people are getting at when they say I'm spiritual but not religious is kind of like a a need for their behavior to come from a spiritual place for them to consult their spiritual being for a lot of things and that might be the voting and that it might be a lot of their behavior in the mm -hmm. quote-unquote secular sphere but how do you cultivate that connection uh, how do you how do you tend for it on a social level through institutions through practices etc so a lot of the um, the questions that are really getting asked there how are we going to make mindfulness more accessible why isn't it tracking ac across class boundaries uh, how do we become activists on behalf of the contemplative ability mm -hmm. um, are the subject of, of current past and future uh, residencies so those are the kinds of questions Simpuisa series is meant to uh, investigate. So at the, at the moment, they're kind of a, it's a, it was a one year experiment, which we'll keep on with, mm -hmm. um, which is identifying those types of questions, finding some people who'd like to be conveners and getting a group of people who would like to go deeply into that kind of question uh, together to um, commit to a, spending two weeks or a month uh, about together mm -hmm. in a um, sort of temporary community mm -hmm. uh, in the Bergerac hub where people um, engage in collective practices together um, have time to do their own work so that they don't have to leave their work life uh, behind uh, but really build a collective space of inquiry into a question which is a which they've found to be of incredible importance in their own lives. Mm -hmm. and one of those questions, or one of the, the types of questions that I uh, just gestured to. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much. I think, yeah, we've, we've covered a lot there. So thank you for chatting today. And yeah, thank you for joining us.